Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Amy Nichols. I'm the campus coordinator at the Campus for Creative Aging, a division of Region 4 Area Agency on Aging. And I'm very happy to have with me Miss Isabel Hinton from Bronson Health Systems. And she is going to be our executive chef today. I've, I've promoted you now to executive chef, Isabel, on our uh, cooking, our healthy cooking class here. And um, we wanted to let you know a couple things before we start. Yes, we are recording this. So if you're having a bad hair day, um, you know, you might want to leave your camera off. If you're having a good hair day, good for you. I'm, I'm happy for you. Um, unfortunately, I have to stay on camera. <laughs> so I have to leave mine on. And um, we wanted to let you know that um, we are going to record this and then post this video with closed captioning for our deaf and hard of hearing participants. It's, it'll take three to 10 business days usually after this session and you can find them on our YouTube channel. The link is on your screen right now. But if you, um, if you can't click, it's Area Agency on Aging, SWMI, like Southwest Michigan on YouTube and you can find it there. All right, Isabel, I am going to stop sharing this now and I am going to get you spotlighted so that everybody can see Thanks, the man. very fun things you're about to do with citrus for us. Very happy for this. Um, All right. And uh, uh, just as a reminder, I uh, would like everybody to re, uh, stay on mute if possible um, while Isabel's talking because it's kind of hard to, to talk over the top of everybody, right? All right. Miss Isabel, it is over to you. All right. Well, good afternoon, everybody. I hope everybody is having a great day on this cold and snowy day, at least here in Michigan. If that's where you're tuning in from, it is very cold and snowy over here. If you're not, if you're in some place warm, I am jealous. <laughs> so to bring us to someplace warm, we're going to be talking about citrus today. And I am really excited about this class because I love all things citrus. So today we're going to be making two delicious recipes and we are going to have some fun. We're going to play some games, do some polls, do some chat questions to get you guys interacting. So welcome. And today we are going to be starting off with an iced coffee recipe, which <clears throat> I don't know about you, but I love iced coffee any time of the year. They drink it more in the summertime, but I like it in the wintertime too as a special treat. Today, it's perfect because it's icy outside today, so we're going to be making a lemonade iced coffee. Now, this is where I like to say, try it before you decide if you like it or not, because when I found this recipe, I was like, eh, I don't know, I don't know if I'm going to like lemon and orange mixed in with my coffee. I'm not sure how that's going to taste, but I tried it and I was significantly surprised. It is actually really, really delicious. So like I talked to my students about making sure you try something before you buy it. So, or try something before you buy it if you like it or don't like it. So, let's begin. Now, as you can see, I have a lot of stuff on my table. Not all of this is gonna be used for the coffee recipe. Some of this is gonna be good for our pancake recipe. So we're only gonna be needing a few ingredients for this iced coffee recipe. We're gonna need cold brew coffee or just cold coffee, uh, orange juice, lemon juice, honey, and ice cubes. So a very simple, easy, and delicious recipe. Okay, Isabel, so, I am got to say, this is not anything I ever thought I would put um, orange juice in was my coffee. Right. I, put a, I put a lot of things in my coffee in my day, but not that one. So I can't wait. I agree. It is definitely a, um, it's definitely a, an interesting, unique perspective on coffee. However, Chris, who also teaches this class, her daughter lives in New York and said that this is a very, very common and very popular drink in New York. So maybe we're just, you know, not there yet in Michigan, but apparently in New York, it's very popular and maybe we can start popular here in Michigan because it's really good. <laughs> so for this recipe, I have a cold brew coffee that I really love. And so this recipe, what you have in front of you is for a double recipe to serve two people, but I, since I'm by myself right now, I'm going to have the recipe and make a smaller batch of it. So instead of one cup of coffee, I am going to be using half a cup of this cold brew coffee. So I'm going to go ahead, 
throw that into my measuring cup. And then I'm going to go ahead and dump that into my bottle here. I put, you can you mix in like a glass, but I'm gonna put it in the bottle because I like shaking these things together. So I've got the coffee in there. Then we are going to add some orange juice. So this recipe calls for half an orange juice, but again, of course, because we are having the recipe, we are going to do a quarter cup. I'm gonna go ahead, quarter cup of orange juice. Dump that into my coffee. This recipe calls for a third cup of lemon juice, but we're gonna be doing two tablespoons and one, or two tablespoons and half a teaspoon of lemon juice. Now I highly recommend using fresh squeezed lemon juice in this recipe because I tried it with the lemon juice and it tasted sort of off. Um, so definitely if you do fresh lemons, it will taste better with the fresh lemons. But of course, you know, if the bottled lemon juice is all you have, just go ahead and use what you have. So I so just need Isabel, I'm going to stop you for just a moment because I have had a request um, and I'm going to screen share for just a second um, what we put out at the beginning because I have some people that have joined us late and I wanted to make sure that everybody got oh, to see um, what we are doing with our closed captioning. Um, these videos are being recording. Um, by the way, be recorded. You are being recorded right now. So if you're having a bad hair day, like I said, please leave off your camera. Um, they will be posted on our YouTube channel within three to 10 business days after this, as soon as our marketing girl gets her, her part done for the front and the end of it. Um, and then we also have the URL to our YouTube channel where these videos will be. And if you need anything else, I forgot this part earlier, um, any other special accommodations, please feel free to email, email me, Amy Nichols. Um, if you've got the Zoom link, you've got my email address and or Chris Flood at uh, Chris at Flood C at Bronson HG.org. So thank you very much. I'll let you go back to your thing now. I'm gonna stop sharing. Okay. That was great. All right. So now we've got our lemon juice, freshly squeezed lemon juice. So I'm gonna <clears throat> take my bowl here. I'm gonna squeeze my lemon juice. I've got a little reamer here, which I love. It gets so much juice out of the lemon. It's incredible how much juice I miss just by squeezing the lemon. So, got that situated. Got some more lemon juice here. And again, remember we're doing a half recipe, so it's not going to be a whole third cup. It's going to be two tablespoons and half a teaspoon of lemon juice. So we'll see how much lemon juice this one lemon gave me. All right. Missing the seeds. I don't want the seeds. I should have done a um, a little stre uh, strainer over it so I could get, there was a lot of seeds in this lemon. <laughs> it's, right. um, you know, it's so funny, yeah, that um, sometimes you get them and you're with tons of it in and sometimes you get them without. It just is a, a thing. Did you, by chance, um, have a chance to, did we talk about how to make your lemon a little more juicy by putting it in the... Um, uh, microwave for a few seconds to kind of warm them up. Have I told you that? I did not know about that tip. That sounds amazing. Would you like to share it with Amy? Um, I, yeah. So basically like 15 seconds is all you need to get more, um, more juice out of your lemon in the microwave. Just give it that and then roll it around before you um, cut into it to get the juice out. It just warms it up and, and everything kind of, well, you know, like people, they sort of relax a little bit when they're warm versus when they're, it's the same thing with a lemon. Wow, super interesting. I would have to try that. I've never tried that before. That's yep. super interesting. <laughs> oh, I love it. All right, so perfect. So I've added the, Lemon juice into our cup here. So the last two ingredients are ice and honey. So I am going to add my honey. Now this recipe calls for kind of a lot of sweetener, um, but I don't love my coffee super sweet. So I'm actually going to do even less than the recipe calls for. So instead of two teaspoons and half a teaspoon, I'm going to do one tablespoon and a quarter teaspoon. Of course make it sweeter, you can make it more sour, you know, whatever you prefer. So, 
time. Dump that right in there. All righty. Such an interesting recipe. I'm so excited. I know. I'm very, very excited to share it with you all. All right. So now I'm going to add my ice into my cup and I'm going to give it a good shake. So Amy, while I'm shaking it, it's going to be a little loud. Would you be able to mute me and do a, a chat or a poll? Absolutely. So just remember, you have to unmute yourself because <laughs> you're the co-host. Okay. All right. I am going to mute her and then I'm going to um, talk about, oops, my polls did not translate when I moved the date. I'm sorry, Isabel. So let's do this. I want everyone in the chat to put, and I will type it right now so you know what it is, uh, your favorite citrus of all. Now, there are a lot of different varieties of citrus, so I'm going to type it in. What is your favorite citrus? And feel free to type in your answer to me. As soon as I can type, we'll be all set. Okay. So is it oranges? Is Oh, key lime. Oh, Joe, I'm with you on grapefruit. I absolutely love grapefruit but elizabeth a good key lime pie is so fabulous laddie a kumquat i i have used to make a really great chicken recipe with kumquats and it's the only thing i ever found that i like those in and i've forgotten all about that so thanks for that reminder kumquat sounds really good doesn't it all right look at how pretty that is it's isabel i can ask to unmute you and then you have to say yes all right, uh, can you guys be okay? We can, you're back. So right there, we have our very refreshing and delicious and very beautiful, beautiful um, cold coffee. Um, <laughs> it's good, it is good. It, um, I have got I, to go make it. <laughs> and by the way, that reminds me, if anybody did not get these recipes, please reply to my email, amynichols at areaagencyonaging.org. And um, I will make sure you get them. Sometimes it goes to spam when I send the recipes out on to class. Okay, sorry, <laughs> Isabel. <laughs> no, you're fine. You are totally fine. All right, so that was the lemonade iced coffee recipe. So super simple, super quick, super refreshing, extra refreshing in the summertime. But if you're kind of craving some, you know, summery citrus, you know, wonderfulness in this cold, winter, highly recommend it because it is absolutely delicious. Now, Amy, while I am just kind of putting these few things away, would you be able to do another chat question um, and mute me? All right, I would be happy to mute you. And all right, one moment here. So let me let me ask you this question, everyone. Um, do you normally eat your um, citrus raw or cooked? Because some people are very, very specific about how they like it. So do you eat your citrus raw or cooked? Both. Ooh. So I recently at our grocery store um, had ah, fresh grapefruit only. I, yeah. I lots of raw. So the reason I ask this is because of what she's making next is um, is cooked. But um, I think that a lot of people forget that you can, you know, really do some great things with citrus like kumquats for sure. Um, all right, Miss Isabel, how you feeling? There we go. <laughs> can you hear me? I can hear you now. Perfect. Okay. So I am really excited about this next recipe. Just like in every cooking class, I did not eat lunch today because I was saving up for <laughs> what I did after the cooking class. So I'm very hungry and I am looking forward to um, eating this recipe and wishing that you guys could do the same thing. So hopefully, you will be able to um, make this at home and have a delicious and refreshing warm, this one's warm, warm citrus recipe for you to try. So this next recipe, orange 
citrus pancakes with a vanilla maple syrup. So we are gonna be making the pancakes from scratch and then we're also going to be making some vanilla maple syrup, which will be really quick and easy and delicious and a very nice complement to these pancakes. So right here, I've got my skillet. Now I was telling Amy at the beginning of this class, I apologize that my skillet is not right in front of me. So you can't really see the pancakes while they're cooking, but I have a very small space today. And so it doesn't really fit with you being able to watch me cook and pair and also make the pancakes. So the pancakes are gonna be cooking up here but we're gonna be doing all the prep. So I am going to heat my skillet over medium right now. Good. All right, and while that is heating up, we are gonna start making our batter with our dry ingredients. So the first thing we're going to be adding is one cup of flour. I got my flour here. You can use whole wheat flour or all purpose flour, whole wheat flour is gonna be really good because it's gonna have more fiber, it's gonna be a whole grain, but if you don't have whole wheat flour or you don't like whole wheat flour, all purpose flour is just as fine, as fine in the recipe, I mean. So, got my flour, I'm gonna go ahead, add it to my bowl, then I'm gonna follow it. And two tablespoons of sugar. Go ahead, get my two tablespoons over here. Oh, Isabel, could we use whole wheat flour? Have we used? Yeah, flour? have you used whole wheat flour in this or could you? I mean, yeah. usually when I make pancakes with whole wheat, I kind of use 50% white and 50% whole wheat, but. Delicious, either way. You can use okay. full whole wheat, you can use half and half, you can use all purpose. This this one that I just used is a whole wheat flour. It's a gluten-free whole wheat flour. Oh, I'm so, sorry. <laughs> I know this is perfect. So no, that was a really good, but yeah, you can use whole wheat flour. You can use all purpose flour. You can use a combination of the both. So, all right. I've got my two tablespoons of sugar in there. Now I'm going to add one teaspoon of baking powder. Yeah. Here's while I'm adding this ingredient, who here loves pancakes? Anybody just want to put it in the chat? Anybody love pancakes? Yeah, if you love pancakes, tell us in the chat because this is also a recipe that I am not. Um... All right, that I think is different and not one I've made before. So, um, but I have to tell you that my Eileen loves them too. My favorite pancakes are pumpkin pancakes of all. Pancakes are good. That mm -hmm. is. Yeah. Yeah, Elizabeth's husband loves them, so. Fabulous. Mm -hmm. My husband is not a fan of them. The other day I wrote pancakes for dinner and he was like, who wants pancakes for dinner? And I was like, me, your wife? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Breakfast for dinner was my kids' favorite growing up. I mean, I could, they wouldn't eat something, but I could pull out pancakes or bacon and eggs and they would be thrilled, so. I got so excited about it, I really did. I really did. It was it, you know, it was such a fun thing to look forward to as a kid, and I still like it as an adult. <laughs> so, Absolutely. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. So I'm adding baking powder, and I just added a half a teaspoon of baking soda. Um, I'm also going to add some salt, and then I am going to mix it, whisk all my dry ingredients to. So I'm gonna whisk these to get them all nice and combined before. I, before I mix in my wet ingredients. So I get that all done, get the baking soda and the baking powder all dispersed through the powder. All right. And then, and then I am going to start my wet ingredients. So my wet ingredients are going to be orange juice. So one thing I do want to mention with juice. Now juice is open. But one thing you need to look for if you're going to drink juice is 100% juice. That means if it's 100% juice, it's just the juice from the fruit and there's no extra additional sugars into it. So right here, I've got 100% orange juice. So this is all from the orange, 100% orange juice. So remember, looking for 100%. 
Okay, I have one more chat question I want to know now because this is a big debate in my family. Pulp or no pulp? Are you guys pulp people or no pulp? I am a very serious no pulper, not even a little bit. Like I don't want any of that in. I just don't. It's a thing. So throw it in the chat and let me know if you are a pulp. Oh, Joe's an either. Good for you. I am a <laughs> Chris is a pulp for sure, too. I'm yeah. No, can't do it. That's funny. Oh, I love it. I love pulp. It is. I always feel weird when I have orange juice pulp free. I don't like it that much. <laughs> uh, my husband says the same thing. And I'm always like, no, mm -mm, no, we're going to. No. <laughs> uh, okay. We've got my orange juice into my bowl. Wait, I'm curious. So who, who decided pulp and who decided no pulp? Um, okay. So Eileen is a no pulp. Chris is Eileen and I are in the same boat. Chris is an is a pulp for sure. And then Joe is is either. So we we have all of the um thoughts represented there. <laughs> all of it. Pulp, no pulp or either. <laughs> okay. Good for me. All yep. right. I'm gonna add a quarter cup of my milk into my wet ingredients. Then I'm going to add an egg. I'm gonna egg here. Add that into my wet ingredients. Then I am going to add two tablespoons of my oil. Got here my canola oil. You can use vegetable oil. You can use canola oil. You can use whatever oil you have. Again, like I like to mention in all of our classes, it's always good to use what you have at home. And that's what's fun about these classes is you can do what works for you. All right. Absolutely. So if I had grapefruit juice at home, I could use that instead of orange juice, right? Exactly. hundred percent. That's what's mm -hmm. beautiful about these recipes. Mm -hmm. so great to, to change up. So got my, got my oil in my wet bowl. And then finally, we are going to add two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Now this I'm really excited about because this is vanilla extract from Mexico. So oh. It is really good. <laughs> so we're gonna add my two teaspoons of vanilla. All right. And that is, um, you can find it sometimes at Meyer or um, at any of the other grocery stores in with the, the Mexican food aisle. Um, and I used to have my husband bring it back to me from his trips all the time because I loved it. And what I like about Mexican vanilla is it's got almost a little cinnamon to it. It's got this little extra flavor. It's it's just delicious, but good old fashioned vanilla works too, right? Yes, it does. You can use, of course, you can use you can use vanilla flavoring, imitation vanilla. You can use you know vanilla extract, whatever you have. And um, on the recipe, if you get a chance to look, if you want to play around with this recipe, you could use a different type of extract. So if you don't want to do a lemon or a vanilla extract, you could do a lemon extract. You could do an orange extract. You could do an almond. Extract, um, lots of different things to play around depending on what you like and the taste that you like. But I really love vanilla, so I keep with my my vanilla here. All right, and then the last thing we're gonna do to add to this bowl is we're gonna add a little bit of orange zest into this bowl. Now I love this zester, which um, I never had a zester until I had this job. And actually, I think Chris got me this zester. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> it really is. It's so great. It adds such a flavor to my recipes whether you're using an orange zest or a lemon zest or a lime zest it's just great but one well, thing and I the do best part it doesn't get the white part the pith um exactly. because that's bitter so you exactly. can see you can just get just the all the good stuff and not the bad stuff i love one of those a plain zester p-l-a-n-e i love it yes and it's true because i didn't know that until a couple of years ago i didn't know that if you have the white part on the orange that's what makes it bitter and so this is definitely way better because it doesn't, you're right, Amy, it doesn't get the white part. So it doesn't make it Makes one heck of a Parmesan cheese grater too, I'm just saying. <laughs> you buy the hard Parmesan cheese and then grate your own, just, it's lovely. Oh, man. Oh. All right, so I've got my zest in there. I'm just going to save this orange and I'm going to this orange later. So I got my zest, I got my vanilla, I got my orange juice and my milk. Egg. So I'm just going to give this a good whisk. 
Make sure all those ingredients are nice and combined because we're going to be adding these wet ingredients to our dry ingredients to make our pancake batter. Oh, it smells so good. I wish you guys could smell it right now. <laughs> Again, smell a vision and cooking glasses would be awesome. But <laughs> there is nothing um, like the bright smell of citrus to really perk you up though. I feel like it's I just got that. Mm. I, I agree 100%. All right, so now I'm going to stir my wet ingredients into my dry ingredients. Dump that all in. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a mix. Now, one thing I do wanna mention, just like regular pancake batter, it is gonna be a little lumpy, but you don't wanna over stir it because if you over stir it, then your pancakes are gonna to be tough. So. And flat, you need, need a little. Buddy that used to, when they made pancakes, they would use an electric beater to oh. mix ingredients together. And their pancakes were always very dry and tough. <laughs> so. <laughs> Did you say quit trying to kill them? It's okay. <laughs> Okay, so that is still nice and lumpy, but all of my dry ingredients are mixed in with my wet ingredients. So now I am going to spray my skillet with nonstick spray, and then I'm going to put the pancakes on the pan. Now, a good rule of thumb is to use either a ladle or a quarter cup measurement to get a good size pancake. So I'm just going to use a ladle. I'm going to dump those on. My skillet and then once these start cooking we're going to put together our vanilla maple syrup and then while that's warming up we are going to do our game All right. so while I'm on the um the skillet amy do you have another question that you could ask anybody well here's what i would i would really love to know so are you we've already talked about cooking versus um raw and we know whether you like pulp in your juice, but I need to know if you, um, do you just drink orange juice in the morning? Because I feel like, or, or grapefruit juice, I feel like people um, really pigeonhole juices to, to breakfast and, and they're not. Um, mostly, I, I mean, I will be honest, my, my juice when it's not at breakfast usually has a little something, something added to it, but um, <laughs> do you just eat juice, do, do you just drink juice at breakfast is my question, or do you drink it all day long? My kids were fanatics about having um, orange juice at lunch. They thought they were very special. So do you only drink juice in the morning or with breakfast? And maybe you don't get up in the morning, but that's my question. Ah, we have some that are like, no. Good. My kids thought they were very special when they got to have juice um, any other time besides breakfast because, you know, you, you didn't want them to, to drink too much juice because you really should be hopefully eating your fruits and vegetables um, as opposed to drinking your fruits and vegetables. Right, Isabel? <laughs> <laughs> yes. When you eat the whole fruit compared to the juice, you are getting fiber. When you dress the juice, the fiber is usually taken out. So when you're eating the whole fruit, you're getting that really important fiber, which is important for our health. So whole fruit is better. Um, but like everything, and like we like to mention in our classes, there's room in your diet for everything, as long as you're eating and drinking a balanced and healthy diet. So... So we have a, a bunch of any times like and but some some do it just with fruit smoothies, which if you're putting the whole fruit in that smoothie, that's that's OK. I mean, you're, you're still getting some fiber. So but juice anytime. Juice is good anytime. OK, how's our pancakes doing over there? They look like they're getting bigger. Oh, yeah, they are. They're smelling really good. So we're going to start the maple syrup while those finish cooking. Um, so for our vanilla maple syrup, it's two ingredients. Simple. You've got a half cup of pure 100% maple syrup. So I'm gonna dump that in here. Ooh, I was almost right. I was thinking that this maple syrup here was about half a cup and I, I should have just dumped the whole thing out instead of making an extra dish. That's all. <laughs> so, got my maple syrup in here. Now, one thing I do wanna mention is that half a cup of maple syrup is a lot. So the leftover syrup that you have for making this recipe, you can put into your refrigerator and keep it in the refrigerator um, in a, a jar that has a lid. Um, that way, 
have an inkling for pancakes or waffles, you can go ahead and grab your vanilla maple syrup. Okay, we've got our maple syrup in the pan. So the only thing we're gonna add is just two spoons of vanilla. Back to your good Mexican vanilla. Um, <laughs> and now would you, you don't have to use pure maple syrup, correct? I mean, no, we you, could cheat if we needed to. Um, now the only thing I would um, like to mention and advise is that if you are going to be using like a normal, you know, syrup or whatever, not normal syrup, um, I'm looking table for like syrup. a- I call a it ta table syrup. Yeah, um, I personally think table syrups are a lot sweeter. And so you'd have to just kind of play around with what you like. I do not like table syrup. Um, I prefer maple syrup. Um, so, but that's up to you and what you like to do. So, that's, hey, we that's do have so a question, Isabel. How long will this syrup you're making keep in the refrigerator? That is a good question. I can look it up from the um, person that came up with this recipe, and I can get you that information because I make sure that I give you the correct information for food safety. So after right. this class, see what they have written on their website um and i can email amy and amy can let you know i can pass it out so good question rosabel good um i too cannot have table syrup because i'm allergic to it so pure maple syrup is all we have and i think you get a lot more flavor for less syrup and less calories if you use real maple syrup that's my that's my opinion i don't think that that's really a big fact <laughs> but um <laughs> rosabel agrees with me i i just think you get more bang for your buck out of it and then there is something called grade b maple syrup which is like you know they take all the good stuff off the top and it's very hard to find you have to go to like someone that makes maple syrup and the grade b is dark almost like molasses not quite as dark but somewhere in there and so that stuff is fabulous and you need just a tiny bit because it's very strong and very concentrated. It literally is the stuff that is at the bottom of the barrel when they boil the stuff to make, when they boil the sap to make syrup. It's the stuff at the bottom and it's so wow. good. I've heard of that before. That is super interesting. I know, grade B, I tell you. I might've spent a little time in a, in a um, syrup place. <laughs> oh, sounds amazing. All right. All right. I will have you wash the game now while um, syrup is heating up and while we wait for our pancakes to finish cooking, if you don't mind. All right. Shall I mute you then, Isabel? That's perfect. Okay. All right. Here we go. I am going to share my screen and we are going to play Isabel's super fun game. And it's crazy for citrus trivia. Now, you guys are usually very smart on this. So I'm going to make sure I get my chat box over here and see what's happening. So what is the Latin name for grapefruit? Citrus Cozumel, Citrus Paradisi, Dicey? I'm not sure how to say that. My Latin is really non-existent. Citrus Sinensis, Citrus Orantifolia. Okay, A, B, C, or D. You can put your answers in the chat. <laughs> uh, Citrus Cozumel, Paradisi, Sinensis or Orantifolia? Oh, we got a guess of A. We got a guess of D. I have no idea. You've stumped me right from the beginning, Isabel. So this will be great. Let's see what we've got. Oh, B. All right. Citrus Paradisi. Well, none of us got that one because I was thinking it was D in my head. So good, good question. What are the primary varieties of Florida oranges? A, Taraco, Sicilian, Naringi, Naringe, Scarletta, Berna, B, Ruby Flame, Ruby Red, Flame, Thompson, Marsh, and Duncan, C, Cara, Blood, Clementine, Tangerino, and Para, or D, Navel, Hamlin, Pineapple, Amber Sweet, and Valencia. All right, so we've got a couple of D answers here, huh? All right. I'm thinking that I'm going to go and agree with you guys that it is D. Let's see. It is. You guys are so smart. Navel is what gave it away for me. I don't know about you guys, but um, the navel one is wh where I went with this. Ooh, true or false? People carried around oranges to smell fragrant in the late 1500s. True or false? A, true, B, false. 
So I think the key to this question is the 1500s, right? It is true. And I know she's got a little blurb here for us. Oranges were thought to be the only defense against the great plague. And so people carried them around all the time. Later people made commanders, I think. I never know how to say that word. Um, out of oranges full of cloves to carry around to smell fragrant in Elizabethan times. They didn't really believe in deodorant, so they would carry those around to kind of, you know, uncover the, cover up the, the smell. Um, but there we go. Maybe we should all be um, eating oranges now to um, keep back from our own plague we have going on. Florida produces more than what percent of the United States supply of citrus? 20? 40, 60, or 70? Ooh, this one's a tough one. What percent? 20, 40, 60, or 70? Ooh, I, I have a couple people say C. Let's see. It's 70. Wow. Interesting. What two fruits are said to be a crossbreed of the Meyer lemon? What two fruits are said to be a cross breed of the Meyer lemon? A grapefruit and a lemon? Is it a mandarin orange and a lemon? Is it a pineapple and a lemon? Or is it a lime and a lemon? So what is a Meyer lemon? Mandarin orange and a lemon? Grapefruit lemon? Pineapple and lemon? Or lime and lemon? This one's tough. We've got a couple different answers. C, D, I'm gonna go with A. Ha, ah. Rosabelle, you were right. It is a mandarin orange and a lemon. It's definitely more lemon than orange to me when I cook with those, but that's interesting. True or false? Limes are always green. True, false. Okay, first key on this one, whenever the word always is in a true or false question, I would teach my kids. <laughs> always, that's the key. Oh my gosh, the answer is true. Isabel, you've stumped me twice, more times than that. The lime, Latin name, Citrus orantifolia has a more intense flavor than lemons and unlike lemons are seedless. They are grown under extremely hot climatic conditions in countries such as Mexico and Brazil and are always green. Oh my gosh. You are so sneaky, Isabel. This one's, I, I don't know if, it, if this is a subjective answer or not. We're gonna find out. What color grapefruit has the sweetest flavor? Pink? Orange, red, or white? Ooh, what do you guys think? Pink, orange, red, or white? Oh, I see now people are arguing already. Some said A, some said C. It is pink. Oh my gosh. Wonder if that's just does something to the sugar content. So, wow, that was Isabel. Nice job on that game, girl. Um, you definitely um stumped me and i you stumped me a lot today <laughs> i thought it was when i found all those citrus questions i thought they were very interesting i learned some things myself oh my gosh super fun okay so let's see right. our, where are we at we are ready to plate up so pancakes are nice and done so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to add these ooh, add these to my plate i'm not <laughs> All done because I'm not going to eat six pancakes by myself. So, <laughs> so right not on I'm camera, gonna... anyways, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to top this with some orange slices. Get a nice little color here. Add a nice, pretty orange colors here. Then, what I'm going to do is I am going to drizzle on. Some of my vanilla maple syrup so it's going to come out pretty liquidy just so you all know it's warm warm syrup so nice and warm added a little bit of syrup yeah. then i am going to add a sprinkle of cinnamon just because i love cinnamon and why not so i'm gonna add a little bit of cinnamon and then finally i'm going to top it with a little bit of vanilla greek yogurt and right there we've got our delicious citrus cakes so beautiful oh my gosh and yeah the maple syrup is runnier you know when it's warm of course um but wow 
So I like the um, the Greek yogurt on there too, is it, or vanilla yogurt. I guess it's vanilla, right? Yes, um, it is vanilla Greek yogurt. Vanilla Greek yogurt. Okay. Um, I just think that is wow. That would be a great breakfast or dinner. That's what I'm saying. Have. All right. Maybe awesome. It has eat today. I don't know. <laughs> I have two recipes so, I have to make now. I, um, I, however, did manage to eat before this class. So I'm not quite as starving as I usually am. Thank goodness. <laughs> but I'm totally going to make these recipes. And again, if you did not get these recipes, recipes, please let me know. And I will make sure that we get them to you. And we will also get you that question answered about um, how long to keep that syrup. In my mind, I don't know that it's hugely... Um, an issue for keeping it for very long because you know vanilla is at room temperature and maple syrup but but maybe when the two are combined there's some issues i don't know so we'll get back to you on that one um all right any questions from anyone or yeah, you got lots of comments about this looks delicious and oh. and really unique recipes today so nice job fabulous i hope you guys try recipes um, and i hope you love them i hope yeah. you guys stay warm on this blustery Hey, and um, have a great day. <laughs> great. I do have one more thing to talk about. So um, February starts like oh, next week. Um, <laughs> and so um, on February 2nd, we are doing Go Red in the Kitchen with Bronson. So do you have any sneaks of what we're going to make during that one or no? Yeah, we are going to make a dinner recipe for the Go Red Kitchen. I'm pretty excited because the dinner recipe is all everything red. So going to be um delicious now we are going to only make one recipe however i am going to be giving you three recipes so that way if you decide to make this on your own at home you've got a dinner and a side and a dessert so you can make that on your own i'm really excited about it it's going to be a delicious and tasty recipe next week so i hope you can make it awesome all right well, thank you everyone. And on behalf of the Campus for Creative Aging, we thank you for joining us, Area Region for Area Agency on Aging and Bronson Health Group. We are so excited you were here. We hope you uh, get a little uh, brightness in your day with these citrus recipes. And we hope that we see you on February 2nd. So thank you very much. Thank you.